I'm Greg Harry, I work for Fire Training. Uh, my main role there is training new recruits and uh, our burn officers uh, who conduct all the prescribed burning for DSC. So everyone who comes into the organisation comes through our general firefighter training and I help manage the, uh, the updating and uh, readiness of those firefighters. So our fire simulation table has uh, been designed to take the fire to the people basically. Um, what we've found through research that the Bushfire CRC has done is that firefighters learn better actually doing and seeing rather than looking at PowerPoints and listening to us just talk. So we were lucky enough to see a demonstration from the Queensland Fire Service on the table and we thought this is what we need for our firefighters. Our organisation funded two tables, they're $20,000 per table that gets the trailer and all of the audio equipment and all the gear to go with it. Um, but we thought that was a good investment. So we've got two in Victoria now and we run it around the state. What was originally going to be just for training firefighters, we've now found it's a great community education tool so that members of the public can actually see real fire and picture their house on their landscape. The table replicates fire behaviour really well. So there's certain things about fire that's influenced by fuel, the weather and the topography. And we can alter the fuel, the weather and the topography on the table and it actually replicates fairly well those sort of conditions. So if it's a hot day, the fire is a lot different than if it's on a cool day. If we've got slope, the fire is a lot different. If we add more fuel or take fuel off, it changes the fire behaviour. Uh, the rate of spread on the table is pretty good. Um, we figure it's about one minute on the table is the equivalent of about an hour out on the fire line. And the pressure that it puts people like that incident controller under because that fire is happening fairly fast, but he's got the same sort of restrictions that he has in real life. So there's problems with machinery, there's, prob there's time delays and all that, and that's just replicated on the table. And we notice that they get under the same sorts of pressures that they get on the fire line, actually on the table. For us, we've, we've been using it for incident controllers, for operation officers and for firefighters, and we use it for fire safety just because we can replicate a lot of safety scenarios and things happen on the table without us even trying to orchestrate them. They just happen on the table and we can pick up the safety lessons from that. Um, you could pick up the planning function. So we've done it where people are sitting in another room trying to plan that fire with a map of the table, trying to work out what's there. And, and because the table, each 20 minutes or so, you just add more hessian so the landscape sheet changes. So you can have your 20 minute break create the next scenario and just keep building through the landscape. So it could go all day or we find an hour or two hours and the people are normally exhausted who've worked the table, so then we would change groups. So on a normal day we might do six or seven burns of a table and that uh, that's a busy day for everybody. So what we've tried to do is replicate our fire suppression efforts. So we've got FOS checks, so our retardant that retards the spread of the fire before it gets there. We've got foam in the bottles and we've got water and what we've tried to do is look at the suppression effort that a tanker would do compared to one of our slip-ons, compared to a small helicopter, and we limit the amount of squirts that they can give. So if you're a large helicopter, you could have 10 squirts, and then there's a minute break while you go and refill and then come back. If you're a small helicopter, you get one squirt, and the same with a tanker or a slip-on. So that just adds to the pressure. We have dozers there with little sand buckets, and they could build X amount of line per minute and then they'd have to wait. And so it's just a timing thing to slow down what, because you could very quickly just hose the table down, but that's not how fire suppression works. It's a time thing. It's about um, getting your resources in place and it all takes time to do so the fire's growing while that happens. Well, it was, that's funny because I thought they might think this is just a bit Australian and it wouldn't work for them like it works for us, but they probably got more out of it than any other group I've ever worked because they jump straight into the role play, they're used to simulating fires, they've never had a simulation with real flame and they just saw that it took everything that they've done to the next level and they were right into it. They were actively participating in the roles, you could see the pressure on them, they were concerned about houses, they were concerned about people, um, they just took to the table and I'd be really surprised if they don't have tables over there by next year.